Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Good morning, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. It is almost the end of March. I cannot believe how quickly this month has gone by. So I wanted to come on here and do another Dragon Ball T series on this entire escape drama. This entire situation is just getting crazier and sadder by the day. So this morning while I was on Instagram, the first thing I saw was Tamika's post. And um, this is what Tamika wrote on Instagram. She says, YouTube, the real Tamika Scott, God knows I didn't want to do this. Sis, you're sitting on all your interviews saying I'm looking for a storyline and attention, knowing y'all stole my money, and for your husband to call Sprint, acting like he was my ex-husband with my social security, getting the passcode to my phone and changing it in 2006, getting access to my text messages, pictures, and videos, and trying to extort me. Oh yeah, all of this is documented. Y'all are evil. The other day you said at Fox Soul Cocktails with the Queens, you were going to give me my, my 30K you stole. So you need to keep your word. Run me my check. I'm tired. So that is what she wrote. My response was, wow. I was shocked to see this because let me go ahead and kind of rewind everything back. Because like I said, I'm keeping up with all this drama, right? This is my show. I'm watching it. I love all the ladies on the show, SWV Escape. This is my era. It brings me back to elementary school with SWV and junior high with Escape. And as a grown adult, I'm just shooketh, shocked, and saddened by everything that's going on. So um, the other day, Escape, they went on to Big Tig in the Morning Show on V103. And they basically addressed the drama because Latasha was there the day before stating her side. So the ladies were talking and Latasha also had a message for the ladies. Um, during the interview, they said that Tamika nor Candy have Latasha's number. Tiny recently got it. And they were kind of just stating their side. It's a long interview. I'm going to play you a snippet. All of these clips that I put in here, definitely feel free to go to those particular YouTube channels and watch the full thing for context. I'm just going to put in some snippets. You guys can kind of get a framing of the story. So y'all go ahead and check this out. So, so Dev, he signed her to So So Dev. Oh, so man. I just feel like if she has an issue or if she wants to know why her album never came out, Ask Jermaine. We asked if she asked Jermaine, and she said no. Exactly, because <laughs> she always wants to try to make me the villain in every situation. She always want to make me the problem in her life for whatever reason. If anything go wrong, if her husband's sister have an argument, Candy made her do that. It's like everything that happens, she tries to make it seem like I was the one who did it. And if it was a problem, then why haven't you ever mentioned it before? I mean, at the moment, um, when that came up on TV... I did not come to film to exploit that. When I came in that scene, I was attacked. And that was my defense mechanism. You know what I mean? It was like, okay, you said all these lies about me. Let's talk some truth. And I knew that once I said it just came out of hurt because I've been protecting her for a long time. Oh. Oh. Not this morning, you not. Not this morning to make Oh, gosh. Okay, y'all, this is a touchy. It is a very touchy. I mean, look, yeah, I'm Latasha was Still emotional a lot of yesterday. Absolutely. As well, mm -hmm. uh, and particularly when it came to this particular part of the conversation about her mama being dragged by the public. Uh, that I don't, know, like. I, I don't so like. That, that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that my sister's been dragged and my mom's been dragged. That's not who I am as a person. That is still my family. I love my mom. I love my sister. We're just going through some things right now. Yeah. I did not lie on my sister. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. And I still, to this day, continue to protect her. Because I could pull out receipts, but I'm not. I could pull out receipts, but I'm not. All the things that we've already discussed with you, but we asked her to leave you a message. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something... 
She wanted to leave for you, and we're going to play it for you, and then we want you to respond. Yeah, because she actually said she re- really liked to have a sit down. Here's the message. When we when we talk about our legacy, um, and when we, we think about the fans, let's really keep that in mind and not get so caught up in self. I mean, I'm talking about me included. You know, mm-hmm. it's like when you think about how many people have talked about how we've gotten them through with, with the music, how Hello, me. a lot of people yes. who come to me and say, you know, I was going to take my life. So this is deeper than than just mm-hmm. us having this on the surface, you know, and, and we just got to get past it. Um, at the end of the day, I think that we will. Tiny. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I can say that we've had plenty of sit downs. Exactly. You know, that's uh, uh, tons of them. But most of the time when we sat down, she didn't really want to talk. She was like, I got to pray about it. Or, you know, she just it was always something. So we could never really get to, you know, the real issues because she would always just cut it, you know, like, I just don't have time for this. Because I guess whatever her and Tamika was going through, she was saying, we haven't talked. And I'm just right. like, Tamika. Just, okay, so Tam- pers- okay, so you get mad, right? You're right. not going to come to work because you mad? You're not going to come to work because you mad? No, you're not messing up my bed. It doesn't matter about, you know, you have fa- family problems. That's just an excuse. Right. You know what I mean? That's an excuse. Yeah. You're not going to stop working. All right, so you guys just saw a snippet of the V103 interview. So then the very next day after that, Latasha went on Cocktails with the Queens. And I thought this interview was interesting. Um, You know, like I always said, I like to hear from all sides, right? Because there's always three sides to every story. His side, her side, and the truth lies somewhere in the middle, okay? So we hear Latasha talking about, you know, her side, you know, the mental health, You know, we saw Tamika crying about how her sister and her mom are getting drugged and she doesn't like the fact that her mom is getting drugged. Of course, Latasha doesn't like that either. And, um, you know, she talks about how her sister is doing this for a storyline and she doesn't know where this is coming from. So I want y'all to go ahead and watch this real quick. It's that. Latasha, we've all seen like there's been a lot of critical critical talk and I wondered about your mental health, like how it must feel. Cause I know how I'm affected when I see stuff and I spent time with you doing a play and, and we've had long conversations and, you know, I, I feel for that. Um, so speaking of mistakes, do you feel like there's a, a, a misconception of who Latasha Scott is at times? And what would you like to say to that? Cause does it, does it get frustrating when PR people say, take the higher ground, don't say anything, be quiet. Just let, I feel like F that, I wanna say my truth. Yeah, I've been quiet for a long time. And I think the misconception mm. for me is that I'm a mean girl or that I'm a thief. You know, even with this $30,000 allegation from my sister of which I've always wanted clarity since, since day one. I've called, yes. I've reached out, I've sent voice messages like to try to get clarity because you're talking about something that happened 10 years, 10 years ago that I know nothing of and I'm finding out in scene. So my thing is, is was this for a storyline or is this real life? Because in real life, me and my sister, we talk and you're talking about 10 years ago and I'm calling you. And if somebody accuses you of something, they should be able to talk to you about it. It's not even about the $30,000. It's about having my sister back. Like I'll give you that. But That's at the right. end of the day, you need to talk to me. I don't want to hear from somebody. You're talking to everybody else outside of me. Talk to me. Word. I'm your sister. And let me tell you something. You keep saying that. You keep reaching for her because I had something like that happen too. And mm-hmm. I had people around me that said, you know what? If you getting up with her on your heart and her on your mind, you get up and you call her. So it don't matter who's the biggest sister, the oldest sister, what? That's your sister. That's your family. That's your blood. Get it together. All right. So you guys just saw what Latasha had to say on Cocktails with the Queen. So then... This morning, I believe that interview is what spurred Tamika to basically bring out her receipts. Because remember, on V103, she broke down crying. She said she didn't want to pull out any receipts on her sister. You know, they basically wanted to just move forward, let Latasha go do her solo thing. Escape was going to move forward as a trio. But after her basically insinuating that Tamika is looking for a storyline, Tamika bought the receipts. And she even had Miss Diane in the video. And if y'all know Miss Diane, we all love her from Family Hustle. That's Tiny's mom. And she's always been a, you know, a stand-up woman. She's always had her children's back and just, you know, been there as the matriarch for all these girls. These girls are all like her daughter. So you can even see that Miss Diane is hurt because she's even saying she loves Latasha, you know. 
they watch these girls from the time they were in, you know, junior high themselves come together. These are 30, 35 plus year relationships. So this is extremely hurtful for everyone. But Tamika definitely bought receipts. Um, but it's so sad that it's gotten to the point where they're trying to extort her over a sex tape, pictures, um, veiled threats. I mean, this is getting very, very disturbing. So I want y'all to watch a snippet of what Tamika had to say. Again, y'all can watch all of these full videos for context on everybody's individual YouTube channel. So go ahead and check this out. I didn't make no mistake. Miss Diane already explained to everybody that she signed all of us up for sound exchange. Well, I signed Escape, every one of them, up for sound exchange. And um, I, I sent all the paperwork and, and Tamika, I, I, I did Latasha, everybody. And Tamika told me when, she, when we filled out the paperwork, her, she was living in New York then. Mm -hmm. and, and I still have the paperwork and I filled it out and I put it, her address was all in New York and everything. He, Tamika, my, my Tamika had gotten her checks and it was a pretty big check then. I'm thinking it was like close to $20,000 the first time. They got a lot of checks though. And Tamika said, I didn't get my checks. And I said, well, you should have. I said, cause Tamika's gotten several checks already. And so we called up to Sound Exchange. Me and Tamika was on the line and we talked to, this guy's name was Joe Mo Grady. I think he's passed away, but back then he was the person we talked to. And he talked to Tamika and she asked him questions about her checks and he told her that her checks were going to Hampton, Georgia. And so after that, she said, well, I live in New York. How did this happen? And he sent her copies of the checks. Mm-hmm. I yep. mean, yeah, so he sent, I just, he sent copies. He said something about your sister and Rocky, mm -hmm. or Edward Bivens, because I really didn't know Rocky's name. Right, he said Edward, Edward Bivens, Bivens cash your checks. But how was I supposed to get my money back? The only way you could get your money back is you had to prosecute him. And you said, I don't want to do that. Once we did do the investigation, well, they did, they sent information. Someone sent in, which was my sister, and I will be put, showing that in a second. She changed the contract and put um, her name on the contract saying that she was my manager. And I, you're gonna see that in a second. And then they put my, uh, they sent my passport. It was a lot of I stuff. I know he said, you know, that they, that they had proof they thought it was you and everything and but there's only reason that that you couldn't get your money back is you would have to prosecute them no one has a reason to lie and you're going to see with the receipts and yeah. if it wasn't for miss diane none of us me candy my sister tiny nobody would have gotten these checks from sound exchange if it wasn't for you finding out about that royalty well, see, we, my husband with the tams i signed them up and I, that's how i found out about it and our business managers in New York told me about it. So that's kind of how I knew about Sound, Sound Exchange. Thank you for for doing that because we've all, we're still getting <laughs> checks today. That's good. <laughs> Get them checks. Yes, love you. Thank and I you. I love Tasha still. I mean, I I love her. I mean, you know, I, I would never lie on none of y'all. I, I love y'all. I know. Y'all my babies. Somehow, my information was changed and sent to sound exchange now when my sister was asked about sound exchange she acted like she didn't know what i was talking about so i'm not gonna do too much but i will clear my name i will show you a few pieces of evidence that shows how they went in and they changed my address to their address how they changed my email everything that diane miss diane did was changed by my sister, Latasha Scott. That will give you evidence. Now, the misconception is the 30,000, it wasn't one check, it was multiple checks. It wasn't just one. So I was very nice. I was being very nice to say that only 30,000 was, was stolen from me. I was very nice to say only 30,000 was taken from me, stolen from me rather. So, you want your apology? How about I give them proof what you did? Just a little bit, not a lot. I'm not trying to bury you. 
You just need to stop being out here say, saying these false things, you and your husband, these threats and everything else. Mm -mm. All right. So you guys just saw a snippet of what um, Tamika had to say, showing the receipts. She had Miss Diane in the video. Um, she went on, like I said, y'all going to go have to watch the full video to talk about the extortion, how she gave her sex tape to her sister to hold on to for safety. And then somehow the sex tape went missing only to now be thrown in her face as an extortion attempt. This entire situation to me is very, very disturbing y'all. But before I even go with the rest, before I even go into the rest of my commentary, if y'all don't know the father has now come out. Tamika and Latasha's father, his name is Randolph Scott. He's a pastor now. He was an ex-police officer, and he's now a pastor. And he did an interview with this um, YouTube channel. They're called The Juice Radio and Talk. And um, it was a really good interview, very professional um, discussion. Um, everybody just allowed him to speak. They asked really good questions. And I'm going to show you guys a snippet of what Pastor Randolph Scott had to say about this situation and how it's affecting him now. People have turned on this man, family members, strangers are calling him out. All of this coming from this reality TV show. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Amen to that. Amen. And Pastor Scott, again, thank you for being here. I want to ask you just a couple of things, Pastor Scott. Why was it important for you to do this interview? Well, the word of God said, don't let your, uh, your good be evil spoken of. And uh, mm. things that I overlook and some things I don't. And I think that this is a perfect time that I just speak up. And uh, for people that don't know me, there's a lot of people that do know me and in the law enforcement aspect, because I've been in law enforcement the majority of my life and haven't been a pastor long, but, you know, people will scandalize you and then people don't want to really want to be part of your ministry no more because what they're hearing now, but they don't know my past. So, so basically, I just want people to know uh, that there's two sides to every so story. And I'm not here to bash anybody, to embarrass anybody, to make it look bad. Just to tell my side of the story, it's up to you to, you know, hey, if you, you know, you want to listen and you want to take heed, that's up to you. That's your prerogative. I love it. I love it. I love it. Pastor Scott, um, my other question, and then I'm going to pass this over to our um, other panelists to get their questions is, um, for you and your family, how has this been for you and your family, this whole process? Well, I have a lot of family members that's falling out with me and uh, not even, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not even trying to get my side. They're just going on what they, they've heard on uh, social media. And I think that's so unfair. Uh, even a, a person that committed a crime is innocent and to proven guilty. And so I've been proven guilty before, you know, trying mm -hmm. to reply or let people know my side of the story but uh it's not but really but one side is not his side or their side it's god's side and that's the main thing it's righteous side and that's why i'm here to you know to show forth that it's not about me uh but it's about righteousness i love it and then my final question and then i'll pass it over to make it make sense is this what do you want to accomplish by doing this interview well, I feel good uh, I mean, to clear my name, be able to speak and not just have to sit back and take people bashing and uh, accusing me and not have an opportunity uh, to speak. So basically, just me speaking uh, make me feel better. We were married on uh, March the 10th, 1972. Mm -hmm. And during that time, you know, we, we got to the point where we, we didn't get along. We were arguing and stuff. So we both decided that it'd be best for us to go out separate ways. Uh, she started seeing someone. I started seeing someone. Uh, I started uh, picking up the kids while they could have uh, time together. So it was never uh, I was jealous of him or there was a vengeance thing. I had respect. Uh, I respected her side and she respected my side. Now, after all these years, now I've been married to Angela now almost 14 years, and we've all shared, we've eaten together, we've done things together, we've gone over to my daughter's house together. 
I never had any idea until I saw this segment that how much she really hated me. I am the fifth member. When your daddy walked out on me and he didn't care whether we swim or sink. I am the fifth member. I'm that silent member that keep you and Tasha together. And the bad part about this, I don't eat anybody's food that can't stand me or you hate me. I would never do that. If I had only known uh -huh. that that's how she felt about me, she would never have to worry about me being around her and my two little children. My children don't understand what's going on, daddy. And my baby daughter at six years old said, daddy, why don't she get over that? She's a grown woman. My six year old said that. And I tried to explain to her. I said, well, people, they hold hostility for years and you will never know until they get an opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to be placed in that position to tell their side of the story. Now this should have been argumented years ago, not just waited on social media. I, I'm so, Basically. I mean, I, I just disagree with the way things are being handled. And let me tell you something, God is so displeased with what's going on in the Scott family right now. Our family has been so blessed. Our family was raised up in holiness. Our family has been raised up, you know, loving each other, doing things together. And for all this to come up, this is the devil's job to kill, steal, and destroy. And he has really done his job. And I tell you the truth, I don't have nothing to say bad, but we had good years. We had bad years. But what, what I tell people, when your marriage don't work, ligmo, let it go. That's right. All right. So y'all just saw um, Pastor Randolph Scott speaking. And like I said, it was a really good interview. And this was four days ago. Me on the outside looking in, um, and I also have a little sister. You know, I'm, I'm the oldest, well, by default in my family, unfortunately. But, you know, it's very heartbreaking to watch this play out. But like I have always said, one thing about reality television, it's not here to give a peaceful, positive storyline. That's very rare. Reality television is made to create conflict, drama. It has destroyed relationships. It has destroyed many marriages. There's a such thing as the reality television curse, where if you go on reality television with your husband or wife, you will most likely end up eventually divorced. We've seen it with Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey, Ozzy Osbourne, the Hogans. I mean, the list goes on over the years, right? One thing I have always said about reality television, as much as I love it, there's a good and bad side. You know, there's this dark, evil side of reality television that a lot of people don't like to talk about. So many times we like to focus on the money aspect and the glitz, the glamour. Oh my gosh, Ebb on the Real Housewife is so stunning. They have these beautiful clothes. Candy's a businesswoman. She's balling. You know, I want to be like her when I grow up. But we never look at the intricacies of what actually makes a reality television show pop and the type of things that it encourages that we're not even realizing, but we're actually watching it in real time with this SWV and Escape reality television show. This was supposed to be a show to bring together two black iconic female groups. It has literally led to a lot more destruction than bringing together these two groups. At this point, it seems like the tour is off because Coco did an interview with Carlos King the other day, and she basically said that they don't see themselves touring with Escape. On top of that, you have a fraction of not only the group Escape, but two sisters. And one of the things that people don't realize with reality television is that it encourages selfish behavior. The goal of the producers is to promote a show and to make it interesting. But that doesn't mean that they're going about it the right way. You have folks playing a very selfish game, willing to sabotage each other's name, reputation, careers. Look at the stuff that Latasha is saying about Candy. Look at the little jabs that Candy's throwing at Latasha. Look at the jabs that the sisters are throwing at each other. Somebody is playing puppeteer. And these women don't even realize that they're puppets being played. And the winner is the producers and the people who are running the show behind the scenes. All of these women are watching this in real time as we're watching it. 
and they're seeing the confessionals. They're seeing the conversations. And all of this animosity on the show is now playing out in real life. This show and reality TV in general degrades family values. Let's keep it real. Um, both of these women come from a Christian background. They were raised around gospel music in the church. Their father's a pastor. And look how much backbiting and how much drama has come from this. Even Tamika said they were literally going at her over and over again until she got exhausted and just blew up and talked about the missing $30,000. She never went in there with the intentions to even bring it up. But they will put you in these situations where you'll literally go crazy and you're acting out of character before you even realize it. You and Rocky stole my money. Mama didn't say nothing. Again, people need to understand with reality television, family togetherness is not a priority. Because if it was a priority, we'd have more positivity and more positive light shown on reality television. Anytime you see a family coming together, something positive, they are usually cancel within the first season. They like the muck, the drama. That's what hooks viewers, and that's what keeps us coming back over and over again. If you want to know what my problem was, it was because you set up our third album to get your solo deal. I said yes, you did. We went into it knowing you were going solo. Another thing that reality television does is that it can inflate one's ego and give people a false sense of self-confidence, okay? We have a situation where we're literally watching Rocky and Latasha, you know, celebrate and, you know, pump each other up about this solo deal that Latasha's been working, I guess, for the past 20 years to get. She finally got her solo gospel deal. She's super happy. But I'm thinking to myself, as they're signing this and they're praising each other, he asks her, well, does Escape even know your next move? Do they know that you're doing this? And she says no. Her personality on the show is so off-putting. It makes her look really bad. And I'm thinking to myself, are either her, her husband, or or anybody involved in this entire situation, meaning the people who are signing her Motown, are they even looking at how she's being portrayed and edited and understanding this is not going to equate good press, nor is it going to equate record sales? Because personally, from what I'm watching and from what I'm seeing, I have no interest now in Latasha's gospel album. Initially, I did, but the more I watched the show... Absolutely not. Because all I see is vindictiveness, jealousy, backbiting, someone who wants the fame of being attached to escape, but they don't want to put in the work like the other three members. Someone whose ego is so inflated and this sense of superiority compared to the other three women, it's a turnoff. And this is not me being disrespectful in any way. This is me keeping it all the way 100 as I'm tuning into this show week after week. Now, I know Tamika was crying and was upset on the V103 interview about her mom and her sister being dragged and people going in on them. But, sis, what you got to understand, it's not just about them being dragged. Your mom and your sister are being called out and held accountable. Tamika, I'm tired, mama. I'm tired. If you so tired, I'm tired. you should have came I'm and talked to I've been talking to you about it. You know they stole my money. Ain't nobody stole well, you my money. You know they did. You know they did. You see it acting like you don't know. Cut the cameras off. And sometimes when we see our family members being called out and held accountable, it hurts because you don't want to see people saying things that are based in truth and logic about your family, especially about your mother. But the problem is all y'all chose to go on this reality television show and they are not showing everyone in the best light at this point in time. So unfortunately, the way that everyone is being portrayed on this show, particularly the dynamic between you and your sister and your mother, that is what the fans are going off of. And one thing about social media, this is not the 90s. Back then, if we saw some stuff in a magazine, you might... Chop it up with your best friend. You might talk about it, you know, at the school lunch table. These kids nowadays have Twitter, 
Instagram and everything else. They're at you. They're looking up family members' addresses. They're doing all types of stuff, you know what I'm saying, to get their point across and to let you know how they feel in real time. This is how folks feel watching the show in real time. And unfortunately, these fans are going to voice their opinions, good or bad, based on what they see on the show. And the show is not portraying Latasha or the mother in a good light, hence why they're being dragged. But I get her for being, you know, upset and hurt because I'm sure she didn't mean it for it to go this far, you know, as far as her mom being attacked and things like that. And another thing that reality TV does that people don't realize is that puts people in these situations to reveal too much. And, you know, the more you reveal, the more salacious, the more juicy, the higher the ratings. And I think that's why they put her in a situation and kept poking the bear, kept poking the bear until she blew up. And even a lot of people who do reality television will tell you, you know, it can get to the point where you forget the cameras are there. You forget that you're being filmed. And, you know, certain things that should be kept private, certain family issues, marital issues that should be kept private end up end up being exposed because they're like in this pressure bubble. And I believe that is what happened with Tamika. And again, it's not going to promote any type of healthy conflict resolution. That's not why reality television is here. They're here for the drama, the social media fodder, because it brings more people to the show. So at this point, this family is going through a lot of trouble and turmoil, and they have to decide as a family how they're going to move from this. Either they're going to come to a healthy conflict resolution, and sometimes it's better to cut it off and let everybody go their separate ways, which is very unfortunate. But it looks like everything that Latasha is being accused of and her husband Rocky are being accused of is very factual and very criminal. And they better hope that they don't end up getting criminal charges behind this because now we're talking about wire fraud. You know, where you're changing names and disguising yourself and claiming to be someone that you're not to get access to somebody else's money. I mean, this is very criminal activity, what they're being accused and what the receipts are showing that Rocky and Latasha did. So I don't know if there's going to be any healthy conflict resolution from this. I also see a lot of people saying, you know, they need to get over it. This is family. But again, sometimes family will treat you worse than strangers on the street. And just because somebody is family does not give them the right to abuse you, misuse you, and steal from you. Where is that in the Bible? So again, don't bring up family if you're not going to be family towards me. Don't expect the same in return. So I just find the whole situation just really heartbreaking and sad that it's gotten to this point. You know, I pray that they're able to come to some type of healthy resolution. And maybe that healthy resolution is everyone parting ways. Latasha and her husband go on about their business and do their solo deal that they've, you know, wanted for so long and they prayed for. Because I just don't think at this point she's a good fit in escape. She clearly doesn't want to be there. So you can't force somebody who just wants to use escape when convenient, but, but they don't want to be there physically to do the hard work. They don't want to come to sound check. They don't want to come to rehearsal because they think they're above the girls and that because they can sing and they have the most powerful voice, they can just come and do it on a whim. That's not fair to the other girls who are there practicing for hours and hours on end when they all technically could be out here doing their own thing. You know, like I've said before, Candy doesn't need to, you know, go on a tour with escape. She's self-made. She's doing good. Her businesses are doing good. She could just chill off of her business and her reality television. She's going back and putting, you know, this energy into escape because she wants to do it, not because she needs to do it. And that's the difference. Latasha needs this more than anybody. And the way she's treating and squandering this opportunity, it's really, really sad. And, you know, I didn't expect to see her in this light. But now that I'm watching the show more and more, it's not a good look. And I think now it's going to be to the point where it's going to have real world consequences on this album rollout. I don't see a lot of people saying that they're going to support her music or that they want to hear her gospel album. This is not showing her in a good light. And I believe she's trying to deflect and put everything back on Candy because it's easier to blame Candy than to look in the mirror and see what she's done wrong and how she's mistreated 
all of these ladies in escape. So this entire situation is just crazy, but I passed the question off to y'all. Please go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. How do you guys feel about this back and forth with Tamika and her sister Latasha? Who do you believe? Do you believe Tamika? Do you feel like, you know, Latasha's the one being picked on? And do you think that there's any way... You know, where do you think they can go from here? Do you think that there's going to be any type of healthy conflict resolution with this entire situation? And do you agree with me that reality television is literally the devil? They're not here to bring folks together. They're here to sow seeds of confusion, drama, and all types of nonsense for clicks, views, and ratings. So let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for taking time out to watch this. Hope you guys have a good day. Make sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. Feel free to like and share the video, and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.